And now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat yeah. and Quaker Puff Rice, yeah. the breakfast cereal shot from guns, yeah. Yeah. present the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King! One! You husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches, back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Fellas and girls, suppose, just suppose the doorbell were to ring one of these days. You answer it, and someone says, Look, here's a bicycle. The world's finest bike. A Schwinn Deluxe Auto Cycle. It's fully equipped. It's worth more than $79. And it's yours, all yours. Well, sir, that lucky fellow or girl may be you. If you hurry and enter the big Quaker Puff Wheat and Rice Contest. Talk about fun. You'll hear how easy it is to enter in just a few minutes. Paul Dupree and his wife had migrated to the Yukon during the gold rush with great enthusiasm and high hopes for the future. The young couple had cashed in everything they owned in the States, and when they arrived at the settlement of Whitehorse, Paul, hoping to get quick rich, had put all but a small part of their thousand dollars in a mining venture known as the Good Hope Mining Company. The Good Hope Mine had petered out, and the other two men, who were part of the company, gave Paul their worthless shares and left the Yukon. Paul, disheartened but not entirely discouraged, built a small cabin and staked a claim outside of Whitehorse. He worked his claim energetically, but without much success. Until one day, he entered the cabin in a state of excitement. <laughs> Mary! Mary, at last it has happened! Oh, Paul, what is it? What has happened? See, gold oh. nuggets. I have found gold at last. Oh, mon chéri, I am so happy. <laughs> oh, it is not much yet. But who knows? Perhaps at last we are having the luck. We... Oh, you have worked so hard, Paul. And you have said so much of the disappointment. <laughs> it is good to <sighs> see you happy again. Oh, I will go into White Horse and get some supplies. Also, I will drink some wine. <gasps> that we may celebrate here in our old little cabin. <laughs> oh, 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 soon perhaps you shall be wearing silks and satins, ma chérie. Oh, boy, <laughs> that I do not need to be happy with you. Oh, oui, Allez, oui. Oui. Get the food and the wine. Oui. And when you return, I shall be dressed in my best gingham for the celebration. Oh, no. Go now, go oh, quickly. Oui. It will not take me long, Marie. Later, at the trading post, several men stood or sat around the bulging hot stove, talking and laughing, as the happy young Frenchman made his purchases at the counter. The great dog, King, and his master, Sergeant Preston, waited patiently beside Paul. Uh, anything else, Paul? Oh, mais oui. It is that I almost forget, Monsieur Carey. I would have a bottle of the best wine. Wine, is it? <laughs> sure, it must be a special occasion that you'll be buying wine, says I. Oh, oui. <laughs> I'll give you the best in the place, Paul. Is it a special occasion, Paul? Oh, Sergeant Preston. <laughs> oh, forgive me for not noticing you and King. I'm, what you say, most excited today. <laughs> oh, you will forgive your friend Paul, huh, King? <laughs> You always were a favorite with King. Tell me, why so excited? Oh, see, these I have taken for my claim this morning. Well, gold nuggets. That's fine, Paul. Well, bless my soul, Paul. Looks like you might have struck it rich at last. Look here, man. Paul Dupree found gold. <laughs> Them's gold nuggets, all right. Kind of small, but maybe there's more. Good for you, Paul. Oh, oh, I'm not so sure there is more, but I am hoping, my friends... I have the feeling, though, that I will find more at my claim. Hope you do, Paul. So far, you've taken your losses very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the wine, that is for Marie and me to celebrate tonight. It is the first gold I have found in the Yukon. This time, we shall celebrate alone, Sasha. But next time, you and King must come to celebrate with us, no? Of course. We'll be delighted, won't we, King? Uh, oh, now I must go, Miss Amy. Someday, when I've struck it rich, then we will all celebrate. Uh, and you, my friends... Bye, Paul. Bye, Paul. Bye, Paul. Bye, Paul. A 
few minutes after Paul Dupree left the trading post, one of the men who had been there entered the cafe and approached a corner table where a friend of his sat alone. Louis, my friend, where have you been? I've been looking for you. Hiya, Kyle. I've been over at the trading post. So? Paul Dupree, that young Frenchman, was just in there buying a lot of stuff. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he's taking a big chance letting Dupree buy so much on credit. Dupree paid for what he got. Huh? With some gold nuggets that he took from his claim. You're joking. I'm not joking at all. He said he wasn't sure there was any more in the claim. But I think he was just being cautious. Why do you tell me this, Louis? You got something on your mind, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I have, Carl. Well, go on. I'm interested. It's beginning to snow real hard outside. Dupree has about three miles to go, and he's on foot. If we take our dog sled, we could easily catch up to him before he reaches his cabin. Well, what is the purpose in catching up to him, my friend? My idea is to get him to sign over his claim to us. Now, it might take a little time. Then we could do away with him. Where will we keep him until we can force him We could him take to... him to that old cabin that's about a mile beyond the deserted Good Hope mine shaft and keep him there. Then when we got the paper, we'd do away with him and move in on the claim. No, 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 no. Ah, you're not too bright, Louis. If we came up with such a paper, the law would question us about having it, especially if Dupree has disappeared. I thought about that. We could have him dated today. We'd say we met him after he left the trading post, made a deal for the claim, and paid him for it. Then they'd think he'd been held up and killed somewhere for the money we paid him. Anyway, we may never have to use that paper, Carl. It's worth a chance. Yeah, perhaps you're right. All right. Come on, we'll get the dog sled and go after Dupree. A short time later, Paul Dupree was trudging along in the heavily falling snow toward his cabin when he heard a dog sled coming along behind him. He stopped and waited. Hello there! Oh, this is a bad time to be starting on a trip, my friend. Yeah, that's right. But we don't expect to be going very far, Dupree. Oh, so? Oh, you know my name, I see, huh? I heard someone in town mention it, that's all. The wasting time, Louis. Yes. Are they gone? Why do you... You're coming along with us, Dupree. We have a matter to discuss with you. No. You heard what he said. You're coming with us. But I must get home, monsieur. Uh, these packages, I, I have the food and wine for the... Yeah, take I... care of those packages. Just put them on the sled there. So? You would rob me of the now little bit of... Put the bit stuff I... on the sled. Come on. Uh, but of course, monsieur. My Marie, <laughs> she will be most disappointed when I get home without... You're not going home, Dupree. You're coming with us. Start the dog team, Louis. We'll follow. Sure, Carl. But I cannot go. My wife's she... moving quickly, my friend, or I shall use his gun. Now hurry. Very well, monsieur. Snow had fallen that evening and through the night. By noon the following day, it had stopped as Sergeant Preston and King, with a young prospector, walked quickly toward the trading post. Pat Carey told me to find you and have you come right over to the trading post, Sergeant. What's happened, you know? No, but I do know Paul Dupree's wife is there, and she seems to be awful upset about something. I see. Well, here we are. We'll know what's wrong in a few minutes. One king. <laughs> well, sure, and I'm glad Fred found you, Sergeant. That I am. What's the trouble, Pat? Oh, it's young Mrs. Dupree who's having the trouble, poor thing. Oh? She's in the back with the missus. I'll get her to come talk to you. Mrs. Dupree, Sergeant Preston's here now. Oh, thank you, Ben. Come tell him what's happened. Well, Marie, what's the trouble? Oh, Sergeant Preston, it is my Paul. I am so worried about him. Paul, what, what's the matter? But he did not come home last night. He came to get food and wine. I have not seen him since. You mean Paul didn't get home after he left here yesterday afternoon? Oui, that is right, Sergeant. I have waited all the night, but he has not come home. Oh, please, you must help me find him. I'll do all I can, Marie. You can be sure of that. Uh, he said he was going home to celebrate. That was about 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. That's right, I heard it. Yeah, maybe he got lost in the storm. Oh, but no. It was not such a storm as to confuse Paul. He has followed the trail from the cabin to town so often. And it is such a short way. That's right. Paul could find his way to the cabin even in a blizzard. Yeah, that he could. If the storm hadn't covered all tracks, it'd be easy for King and me to trail him. You stay here with Mrs. Carey, Marie. Oh, we, oui, sir. No. Meantime, we'll do what we can to locate Paul. Yeah, come along, Marie. Later that afternoon, Lou arrived at the old cabin where Carl was waiting with Paul Dupree, who was bound hand and foot on a bunk in the corner. Well, Carl, I got the supplies we need. Oh, good. That should hold us for a while, Louis. 
There's one thing we didn't think of, Carl, and it's got me worried. Oh, what's that? That Marty, Sergeant Preston, and his dog are in town. And what's more, Dupree's wife talked to him at the trading post. My Mary, she must Shut be up, worried. Dupree. Go on, Louis. Preston has promised to find out what happened to Dupree. Him and his dog have a reputation for getting those they go after, Carl. Oh. Uh, it is not good, my friend. That's right, it isn't. I say let's get rid of this Frenchman now and light out for Dawson. Yes, and then that Mountie would be tracking us down for murder. No, uh, no, Louis, that, that isn't a way. Then what are we going to do? There's enough dynamite here to Kevin to carry out a plan I have, Louis. Dynamite? What's that got to do with the fact that that Mountie's liable to get on our trail? That's just it, Louis. After we make certain preparations, we'll see that he does get on our what? trail. Up to a certain point. Say, are you crazy? I Take say... it easy, take it easy, my friend. If my plan succeeds, and I'm sure that it will, we can still go through with our original idea of taking over Dupree's claim. Sergeant Preston and King will not let you. They will make you more sorry. Ah, uh, shut up. Look, Carl, I'm still not convinced. With that Mountie and dog hunting us... Don't worry, we... Louis. <laughs> my plan will fool him. He and the dog will go into a trap, and then Sergeant Preston and his king will no longer be among the living. We'll continue our story in just a moment. You must hurry. Time is flying by. No foolin'. Our big, easy Quaker puffed wheat and rice contest will soon be over. Don't miss out. Enter now. Listen, you've a chance to win a brand new, fully equipped Schwinn Deluxe Auto Cycle, the world's finest bike. 101 of these dream bikes are being offered. Each is worth more than $79. Just imagine, every bike comes fully equipped with these sensational features. Stuart Warner Golden Meteor Speedometer to tell you how fast you're going. Bike Pilot Compass to tell you which direction you're going. Hand-operated expander brakes, front and rear, for safe, fast stopping. Exclusive Schwinn Spring Fork to absorb rough road shocks. Slipstream built-in electric fender light, plus kickstand, chain guard, streamlined battery container tank, and electric horn. Man, oh man, these 101 bikes have everything, even white wall balloon tires. Models for boy contest winners have a sparkling maroon paint job with ivory trim. Girl winners get special, fully equipped, beautiful, smart-looking blue models. What's more, grand prize winner also receives a Zena Z-Net radio for his or her bike. Now listen carefully. Here's all you do to enter this easy contest. Just finish this sentence in 15 additional words or less. My favorite college pennant on the Quaker puffed wheat or rice package is... Now that's the start of the sentence... All you do is finish it. It couldn't be easier. Just pick up a package of Quaker puffed wheat or rice. Look at the back of the package. On the back, you'll find a series of colorful flags. Pick out the one you like best and tell us why you like it. No fancy writing necessary. Here are examples to help you. My favorite college pennant on the Quaker puffed wheat or rice package is Notre Dame. I like it because Notre Dame has swell football teams. Or, I like the Pennsylvania flag because its colors, red and blue, are my favorite colors. That's all there is to it. Could anything be easier? Just a few simple words of your own may win you the world's finest bike. A Schwinn Deluxe Auto Cycle with a retail value of over $79. Jot down your entry on a piece of paper. Include your name and address printed plainly. Mail with one box top from any package of Quaker puffed wheat or rice. Send right away today to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Send no money, just one box top from Quaker puffed wheat or rice with each entry. Mail to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now, to continue our story. When the crook Lou went to the place where Carl was keeping Paul Dupree and told of his concern about Sergeant Preston and King trailing them, Carl spoke of a plan that would trap the Mountie and Dog and do away with them. Making sure that Dupree was well bound, the two men took the dynamite and fuse and were about to set out from the cabin. Now, as soon as we get things set, Louis, we'll go into town. But that's risky, Carl. Yeah, perhaps, but it's the only way to carry out the plan we have. I don't like being so close to that Mountie and his dog. <laughs> You'll be even closer when we get to town. I want you to go and find him. But go find him? That's right. You will tell him what I instruct you to tell him. I'll wait at the hotel for you. Now, wait a minute. 
Why didn't Conant happen to talk to him? It's for our own good, Louis. And he won't suspect a man who comes to give him information that will help him find Tupri. Well, well maybe, but... Nah, don't worry. I'll tell you exactly what to say. You follow my directions, and before another day goes by, the Mountie and Dog won't worry us anymore. Now let's go. Mush! Mush! Later that afternoon, after making their preparations, Carl and Lou arrived in Whitehorse. While Carl waited at the hotel, Lou went to the trading post to find out where he might find Sergeant Preston. Learning that the Mountie had gone to the cafe to make inquiries, Lou went there, entering just as Sergeant Preston finished talking to the barkeep. Sergeant, Sergeant Preston. Want to see me? Yeah. Yeah, I got something to tell you. Quiet, oh, King. Yeah. Dog don't seem to like me much. So I notice. Didn't I see you at the trading post this noon? Yeah, that's right. My name's Lou Wilder. I'm new in town. Stopped at the hotel. At the hotel? Yeah. I see. What is it you have to tell me, Wilder? Well, it's something I overheard about Dupree. Oh? Huh? That's interesting. Let's go outside where we can talk. Come on, King. Quiet, King. All right, Wilder, what is it? Well, late last night I was in the cafe. Two men were sitting at a table, sort of talking low. What'd they look like? I didn't take a very good look. They were sort of tough looking. I see. Go on. Well, I, I heard them mention someone named Paul Dupree. And they said something about a deserted shaft of the Good Hope Mine. I remember one of them saying, we don't have to worry. Nobody ever thinks of going there. The whole thing didn't mean anything to me till this noon. When that woman coming to the trading post talking about her husband, Paul Dupree, being missing? Why didn't you tell this to me then? That was four hours ago. Well, I, I didn't get to thinking about it till later. Then when it come to me that what I'd heard, I, I came looking here to tell you. Well, thanks anyway, Wilder. Come on, King. We'll get my snowshoes, and we'll go on out to the Good Hope Mine. I'll let you know, Wilder, if your information amounts to anything. Come along, fella. After Sergeant Preston left, Lou hurried to the room at the hotel that he and Carl occupied. Well, Carl, he fell for it. Good, good. <laughs> you see, Louis, a Mountie is only human, and he can be fooled like anybody else. He went to his cabin to get his snow shoes, and then he's going out there. Uh, good, good. We can see him go by from the window. We let him and his dog get a good distance ahead, then we'll follow. Yeah. That trail out past the shaft's been fairly well traveled today, so we won't notice the tracks coming in. I thought of that, too. It'll take him a little while to search the runways inside the mine. So uh, we'll, we'll have a chance to get there before they come out. Hey, look, I see him coming down the street now. Let him go. We'll follow later. And then at the shaft, we spring the trap that does the trick, huh, Louis? Get your things ready. Right. Preston has no reason to think he's being followed. An hour later, Sergeant Preston and King arrived at the entrance to the deserted shaft. The wind had driven some snow a short distance into the shaft. But Carl, realizing that the Maori would be suspicious if he didn't see any tracks going in or out, had seen to it that he and Lou made many snowshoe tracks all around, even into the shaft to the point where the snow hadn't reached. Well, King, there's a deserted mine shaft. Plenty of snowshoe tracks around the entrance, even going into and out of the shaft. What is it, fella? The great dog sniffed the tracks and knew that some of them had been made by the man who had talked to his master in town. King sensed danger. And he realized that all the tracks had been made by only two humans, not by several, as his master might think. He growled once more. Then, looking at Sergeant Preston, he barked. I know you're trying to tell me something, King. Wish I could understand, fella. Come on, we'll go inside and investigate. With King at his side, the Mountie walked slowly into the shaft until he came to where the drifted snow no longer covered the floor. Then he stopped, gazing intently at the ground. Quiet, fella. If anyone is inside, no use warning them. Oh, better strike a match. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> Easy, fella. I think I'm beginning to understand what you were trying to tell me out there, King. What's more, I think we're going to find Paul Dupree if we play our cards right. Well, fella, I guess you and I had better do a bit of planning before we make our next move. <laughs> A short time later, Carl and Lou approached the entrance to the mine shaft cautiously. I don't see him, Carl. He must have gone inside. I hope you're right. Have your gun handy, Lou. Uh, 
Here we are. Look there. They did go in. I'm sure. All snowshoe tracks look alike to me. How can you tell? We didn't have dogs or a sled with us, Louis. But see there, single dog tracks into the shaft, and they don't come out. Hey, that's right. They must be in there. Of course they are. <laughs> now I'll step inside and light the fuse to the dynamite we put up on the showing beam inside the entrance. Be ready to run, Louis. You sure that fuse is long enough? Sure, sure. We'll have plenty of time to get away. Hurry, Louis. We run up the trail a bit. Yeah, this, this should be safe enough. Yeah. Now we can watch what happens. Yeah, it should happen any second now. I have to dose that mountain. That dog! <laughs> there, it sealed him in. And there's no other way to get out. I made sure of that. Now we'll go back to the cabin where we left Dupree and get things settled with him. Come on, Louis. A short time later, the two men arrived at the cabin up the trail. Uh, uh, it's good to get these snowshoes off. Yeah. I'd rather travel with a dog sled. Uh, uh, uh. Well, Dupree, we've completed the plan that we made. The Mountie and his dog are done for. You... You killed Sergeant Preston and King. No. No, I do not believe you. <laughs> sort of gives you a shock, eh? Guess you didn't think we were smart enough to do it. We've given them a suitable grave. They're buried alive in the deserted mines. That crop flew in the mine of good hope. In my mind. Yes. And now it's time for us to settle our affair with you. I will never sign that paper you want. Never. We've decided to forget the paper. You know too much anyhow. Yeah, Carl. Let's get it over and get back to town. Now yeah, shoot him. Then we throw him into the ravine behind the cabin. But you cannot. I am tied up. I have done you no wrong. Please, monsieur, think of my wife. Oh, oh. Now is the time for you to think of her, Dupree. Your parting thought. <laughs> A nice sentiment, huh, Louis? Sure, sure. Use your gun and stop talking. So yeah, much. that's good advice. Now, it's time to say goodbye to Paul Dupree. Hey, oh, my God. Somebody shot through the window. I'll get my gun. Get him, as the door burst open, King, like a streak of lightning, hurtled across the room with the man he had disliked from the first. With a mighty leap, he grabbed Lou Weiler's gun arm at the wrist. Hey, take him off. Get him away. He'll kill me. I'm King. I'm Don't let him get him, you can't. Oh, my arm. Sergeant Preston and King. It's impossible. I don't understand. You went into the mine shaft. We know it. The dog tracks. They showed you went in, but didn't come on. Sergeant. He said they had buried you alive in the deserted shaft, and they were about to shoot me. I know. I saw him through the window. I'll untie you, Paul. But, but the explosion, it must have caught you inside. There's no other way out. I, even I do not comprehend, Sergeant. How did you escape? Uh, King took an instant oh. dislike to Wilder when we first met him. And King's actions at the shaft entrance convinced me he recognized Wilder's scent. Meaning, of course, that Wilder must have been there before he came to me with a fake story. There you are, Paul. Thank you, Sergeant. You went in and didn't come out. Those dog tracks. We went part way inside to the place where the snow ended and the silt began. I looked for tracks in the silt, but there were none, showing that no one was in that mine. But they say that King's tracks led in, but yeah. not out, Sergeant. Very simple, Paul. No. When I got to the shaft entrance, there were plenty of snowshoe tracks all around, but no dog tracks. I knew they wouldn't be able to pick out mine, but they would see King's going into the shaft. I know, they did. I but... carried King out. And noting that several people had traveled up and down the trail, leaving many tracks, I took King a short distance up the trail. And we hid behind a snowbank. After they set off the explosion, we followed them here. Oh, I knew they could not outsmart you, Sergeant. It was really king or they couldn't outsmart. They wanted my claim. They thought I was not telling the truth about there being so little gold there. I see. Pick up the guns, Paul. Oui, monsieur. Watson King. My arm. What about my arm? I'll bandage it for you. We'll take a shortcut back to town. You'll see a doctor before I put you both in jail for attempted murder. Later, at the trading post, a group had gathered around Preston King and Paul to hear all the tales. Oh, it is like a miracle that Sergeant Preston and King escaped. And we're in fun to save you, Paul. Sure, and them two have a way of doing things that make them seem like miracles that they have. I even offered to give those men our claim to let me go. But I refused to sign it over until they would bring me back safely. And they would not do it. They were sure the claim is worth a great deal. 
But there is very little gold in it. Yeah, oh, but it does not matter, mon chéri. Now that you are hey, saying... Everybody. What's the excitement? What have you got there? Gold. And there's lots more where this came oh. from. Where'd you get that? I came past the Good Hope mine. There was some kind of explosion or landslide or something. It closed up the entrance. I know. Well, off to one side, part of the rock had been uncovered. And there's a streak. A vein of gold running through it. Holy smoke, they sunk the shaft in the wrong place. Paul owns that mine now. Great day, Paul. You're a rich mine owner. Well, Paul, looks like those killers did you a good turn without meaning to. I'm very happy for you and Marie. Oh, if they had succeeded in shutting you up inside the mine, one of me, the gold would have meant nothing to me. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate your feeling. Now we shall have that big celebration for everyone, Sasha. Oh, we, Paul. You and King will be the guests of honor. You and I owe a great deal to King. If hadn't been for him, I might have gone into that mine without suspecting Wilder. And then they would have killed me. Oh, oh, such an intelligent dog I have never heard of before. Hey, look at King, would you know? Sitting there listening and looking at you with a twinkle in his eye, Sergeant. <laughs> Well, perhaps he's trying to tell me he's as happy as I am that this case is closed. Hey, eh, King? In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's program. Say, have you seen those swell, colorful flags or pennants on the back of the packages of Quaker puffed wheat and rice? Well, get a package. Look at them. They may help you to win a bike in our big Quaker puffed wheat and rice contest. An easy contest that offers 101 fully equipped Schwinn Deluxe Auto Cycles worth more than $79. Enter the contest today. Just finish this sentence in 15 words or less. My favorite college pennant on the Quaker puffed wheat or rice package is... Completing that sentence is easy. Pick out the flag you like best. And write down why on a piece of paper. Mail it together with your name and address and one box stop from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Rice to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Contest closes midnight Saturday, October 23rd. Anyone living in continental United States may enter except employees of the Quaker Oats Company, their advertising agencies, and their families. Entries judged on basis of originality, suitability, and aptness. Duplicate prizes for ties. Judges' decision final. All entries and ideas therein become property of the Quaker Oats Company. Get a move on. Mail your entry today without delay. Send to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of White Hawk. Travelers had talked of seeing a strange figure dressed in white, driving a pure white dog team along the stormy ridges of Torngek Mountain. But the sun and snow play strange tricks on a man's eyes in the frozen north. And it wasn't until King and I learned that the White Hawk was not only real, but a killer as well, that we started in pursuit of him. The trail led to a hidden valley deep in the mountains, and dangers such as King and I had seldom met before. Be sure to hear the exciting story of White Hawk on Friday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.